All right, so it's been a couple of days since Apple's event, and I've had some time to kind of gather my thoughts and my opinions on, on all their new products and kind of what's kind of going behind the scenes. I feel like Apple's not really showing their full hand when it comes to their products, and I think maybe they've only kind of revealed half of it, and that's kind of the hardware side, and hopefully that their conference later on in the year will actually kind of bridge everything together and uh, reveal the, the bigger picture. So when it comes to Apple and all the stuff that I have and how I use it, so I recently made a pretty hard switch over to Apple uh, just to be part just to be a part of the whole Apple ecosystem. I was previously on a Windows uh, computer as well as an Android and I decided to give myself a used iMac. Uh, I ended up picking up the SC2 just to hold me over until the iPhone 12 Pro came out. I ended up picking up an iPad Pro uh, so I kind of jumped pretty hard into it and one of the main reasons why was because the future of Apple and kind of what they were doing with their own chips uh, there was plenty of rumors that they were going to be doing that and, and they ended up announcing they were going to be making their own silicon before actually releasing their products. So that was the big thing that made it very appealing uh, for me to make the switch. Uh, being in the field that I am with photo and video, I knew if their iPad Pros uh, can handle editing 8 and 6K, if they're going to be making their own chips, uh, I'd be able to handle much more. So. That was kind of like that gut feeling that I had. I was like, you know what, let's make the switch now. Let's just get into the ecosystem so you're ready to go when these products come out. And I kind of have that same kind of like gut feeling that uh, there's more to come, really. Like, uh, I feel like they haven't really showed us everything. And of course not, it's Apple, right? But I feel like this recent event really kind of foreshadowed really what's to come. The biggest thing, obviously, for me was the iPad Pro, uh, the, the newer version, right? Putting an M1 chip into the iPad Pro. Now, I heard a lot of the YouTubers talk about it and say things like, uh, you know, we need Mac OS on it, we need, um, it's the software that's holding it back, and I 100% agree. I initially got my uh, iPad Pro, I ended up picking up a 20, uh, the 2020 iPad Pro about a year ago, and I initially got that to kind of be like a laptop replacement, like a device that I could use when I'm on the go, like when I'm traveling or if I'm working away from my main setup. I haven't been able to really use it in that way. Part of it's my fault because of the software that I use, and the other part is Apple really hasn't un unleashed it uh, on the software side to be able to really kind of seamlessly kind of go back and forth. Now, as for the software that I use, I do use DaVinci Resolve to edit my videos as well as Capture One to edit my photos. The main reason why I do use those two editing programs is because I prefer not to trap myself in like a subscription-based uh, service. With Capture One, I have paid twice and I got to choose when I wanted to upgrade it to the next thing as opposed to constantly paying every month. And DaVinci Resolve, I've been using the free version and been getting away with that for quite a while now. So neither of those editors have uh, mobile or iPad versions that I could use on the go. So it, it is a little tricky and I'm kind of slowly hoping, crossing my fingers, that it'll eventually happen, that, that those companies will release mobile versions, especially when once they design their software uh, for the M1 chip. I think there could be some kind of easy way for them to kind of translate it to a mobile or iPad version that they could put out to kind of compete with, with say like Lightroom and uh, LumaFusion. So that's what I'm hoping for. That's what I'm still kind of crossing my fingers on. Um, and I think maybe we'll get there. And if we don't get there with those companies, then I think maybe Apple will probably definitely beat them to the punch um, and be like the main source of like video editor. Um, everyone's hoping that Final Cut Pro is gonna eventually come to the iPad. And I'm still kind of hoping for that. I have yet to pay for the, the full version of DaVinci Resolve because I'm kind of like waiting to see what's going to end up happening. I would probably end up buying Final Cut if it meant I could use it on my iPad. Um, so I don't know. We'll see. Uh, it's kind of all up in the air. I do enjoy using DaVinci Resolve, but we'll see. We'll see. But Apple obviously didn't touch on iPad OS, and that's something they usually do for later on in the year. But again, kind of foreshadowing really what's to come. I feel like you don't put the M1 chip into an iPad just to keep it the same. You don't add the ability to upgrade the RAM on this iPad to, to 16 gigabytes just to keep it the way it is. You don't add the ability to increase the storage up to two terabytes to keep it the same. Like it, they, they're they setting it up basically to be this powerhouse of a device for professionals or creators or, or whoever they're targeting to only really be held back by the software of this device. Now, I don't know if they're going to go towards bringing macOS to the iPad or just update the version of iPadOS to be more like macOS, but something's got to give, something's got to be coming, something's got to be changing really for, for them to utilize this whole brand new powerful device. They, they keep improving the amount of tech into this device. Not only is it powerful, but it's 
they've crammed so much impressive tech into it the this xdr liquid retina display it's their most impressive screen yet with all the tech that's inside of it to be able to, to function the way that it does only to be held back by the software the os the apps for this device so i don't know again i don't know if it's they're planning something big as far as revamping all their apps or introducing apps like final cut or or whichever or they're working with developers and third-party apps to to upgrade their versions of their apps to bring to the ipad so that's that's cool. that's what i'm hoping for again i hope i'm hoping that they're working with davinci resolve to kind of adapt their editing program to a mobile version for the ipad uh, I don't know. I don't know. There's a there's a lot. I feel like again that they're they're not really telling us that they're setting up really to to unravel when they finally release the software that's going to take advantage of all of this hardware in their new iPad. So I just hope that it's going to be able to kind of translate down to the older Pro iPads. I think that they plan on definitely kind of bridging that gap from their Macs and their mobile devices. So we'll see. Um, hopefully it's this year. Hopefully it is it, at the WWDC uh, keynote and we don't have to wait until next year. But yeah, I, that's something, What the way I see this keynote that just happened, kind of foreshadowing what's to come uh, with their new iPads. But that about does it here for this one, guys. I just wanted to kind of share my thoughts on uh, how, how excited I am over this Apple event. And let me know what you guys think. Um, if you guys agree with me, if you guys I uh, think I'm just full of crap. Uh, let me know down in the comments below. Definitely like this video if you guys enjoyed it or got something out of it. Or if you're looking forward to something that I mentioned in this video. And subscribe for more content uh, just like this. I do a lot of photo and video stuff, as I said before. Uh, as well as some tech stuff just like this. So if that is your jam, definitely consider subscribing. And uh, hitting that notification bell so you guys get notified when I post new videos. I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.